Hi everyone, I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast. Today we're going to talk about AC frequency on your Everlast machine. All right, so before we run any beads, let's take a look at what frequency actually is. In a previous video, we learned about AC balance, where we're going from electrode positive to electrode negative. So here we have a full cycle over one second is one hertz. So if we come down here, here we have five of these same cycles over one second. This will give us five hertz. While we'll never set our machine to either one of these, it's still a good representation of what we're dealing with. So now that we've shown you what's going on with frequency as far as the wave cycles, let's take a look at what it does to our arc. So here at 60 hertz, you can see we have a fatter, wider arc. So you're gonna be heating the metal up a little bit more as you go along. At 120 hertz, that arc cone starts to narrow down a little bit. This will give you a more stable bead. And then at 250 hertz, it's a real pinpoint arc. So you're able to really put this where you want it to go and the arc doesn't stray as you're going along. So let's run a couple beads and see what we got. For this demo today, we're using the 255 EXT. The only setting we'll be changing is our frequency. Let's take a look at what we're running with today. For 100 amps, frequency is at 60 hertz, which is our standard output for like a transformer machine. It's also the standard when you turn your machine on. We run in 35% balance, no downslope, minimum end amps, 10 seconds post flow, 0.4 seconds pre flow, 35 start amps. Here we are running 60 hertz. If you're used to running a transformer machine, this is probably a view you're pretty used to. Uh, we've got a nice wide arc cone kind in both sides. Arc's a little unstable, um, but it's running pretty well. You can, get, you can get a lot done with this, uh, this frequency. You'll notice the, the sound of the arc here. It's, it's a softer sound. You can almost hear the cycles as we're going along. As we move up, this sound's going to become a lot more harsh and a lot higher pitched. Here's our run. We just made it 60 hertz. You see we got a nice shiny bead little less definition than I generally like to have. At 60 hertz, it's a nice soft arc. You got a nice wide arc cone. So as we go up, we'll hear a little harsher noise out of the, out of the arc, but we'll also get a little more definition as the, the puddle freezes faster as we move along. So now that we've made a run at 60 hertz, we're gonna jump up to 120 hertz and make another run. So what we see here is the arc's gonna be a lot more stable. It's not trying to jump back and forth between the sides of the plate and we're, we're getting a little more puddle definition as the puddle freezes faster than it did at 60. So you're also gonna notice we get a much higher pitch out of this weld, and that's because we've got twice as many cycles per second going. So here we have our 120 hertz run. You can see we got a little bit better puddle definition at the same amperage. So what's going on here is just to represent this for you guys, let's imagine this is our 60 hertz arc cone. You can see it's pretty wide. As we tighten that up to 120 hertz, it narrows our arc cone. So as we go along, we're not heating up as much of the material. And from the side, you can see how that works as well. We're not having as much heat input across the whole plate, but it's more narrowed. So now we've ran 60, 120. We're gonna move on to 250 hertz. What we're gonna see here is a very tight arc cone, extremely high pitched arc, and it's gonna be it's going to be hard to get this arc to move off the center of the plate. So here at 250 hertz, you can see at the start of the weld, I'm just a little bit cold. And that's because our heat input is reduced at 250 hertz due to the, how tight the arc cone is. So I started rolling into it a little bit more, and it actually started getting away from me here in the middle just a little bit. I started backing out, and you can see we started catching back up and actually got a little cold as we got to the end. So for me, I think running a very high frequency can sometimes be a little harder due to the diminished heat input and how big of effect that has as you go along the, the joint. All right, we just got done making our pass at 250 hertz. We see here at the start of the weld, I was trying to run all three of these at about the same amount of pedal. So around 85, 90 amps. You see here at the start, I was a little bit cold. I started rolling into the pedal, probably around 90 amps here. It got a little hot. And then as I started going along, it got too hot. I backed out and we got cold again. So for me, if you run a really high 
frequency like this, it can almost be harder to run than a lower frequency because your heat input is so little, it's so concentrated that it heats up that spot so much that when you back off, it does the same thing. It cools that area really fast because you weren't having that heat go forward. So I think a higher Hertz can sometimes be harder to run on a joint like this. So here we have all three runs, 60, 120, 250 Hertz. Now, generally they all look pretty much the same and that's because I'm adjusting not only how much filler I'm adding, but how much amperage I'm giving it with the pedal and my travel speed. So let's start here at 60 Hertz real quick. So here we have 60 Hertz. At 60 Hertz, you have a real wide arc cone. And with how wide that arc is, it's almost preheating as you go along. So it can be really helpful when you have thick material just because you have so much more heat input. Generally, I'll run 120 hertz on most of my parts, but if I jump on something thick, like thick cast or a thick machine part, sometimes I'll drop my, my frequency down a little bit just to give me a little more heat input and help it really melt in. So here in 120 hertz, it's a really good balance between a stable arc, a, a pretty decently wide arc cone, so you just don't have to work as hard. It's a, just real nice and smooth on these outside corner joints. When you get up into like really thin materials, this is where 250 hertz can help. As I kind of stated earlier, you have a little bit of an issue with not having enough heat input to start. So you have to kind of work to, to really drive the arc in there. And that's where this can help with, uh, with thin materials because you're not preheating as much material like you would at 60 hertz. So 250, really good for thin material. 60 hertz, really good for thick material. 120, it's a very good all-around setting. I'm Jesse McCollum, Everlast Ambassador. You can follow me on Instagram at mccollum.weldfab. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Weld mean, weld green.